Hello, Mavic traders, and welcome back to your currency recap. This is Ankit here, and let's break down today's market price action. Thursday, September the 14th. Let's get into it. Let's break down today's uh, market price action, taking a look at broad market analysis, looking at our currency baskets, and let's take a look at what else we have in store for us in this upcoming 24 hours. So let's get into it. Disclaimer. This video was created for professional stock and option traders. Maverick Trading is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70 to 80 percent of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's break down what happened today. So looking at the market recap today, it was a really messy day. By messy means that things just didn't line up. We had equities, bonds, and the US dollar. They all were sort of strong instead of weak. We didn't see a big rally in the dollar, but we had bonds that did well. And usually bonds weigh down in the equities, but that was not the case today. So it was really a messy day when things just didn't line up. Uh, we also had, uh, you know, strong data out of the U.S. Uh, and we also had the ECB was actually the biggest mover today. Um, you know, they raised rates by 25 basis points, but the statement was really dovish. They're concerned about the growth and the outlook in the eurozone, and that really took the currency uh, a bit onto the downside. So we'll we'll break down um, the the price action here. But that was the the story today. It was a messy price action. Now take a look at. The currency market. The European currencies actually took the biggest hit. Pound, euro, and even the Swiss franc was down. On the other hand, the money didn't go into the dollar. That was a surprising one. Um, we will take a look at the dollar in a bit, but you know, with the last two days, we had um, you know reaffirming that the data is uh, supporting inflation uh, data going into the next FOMC meeting, but the dollar seems to be sort of pricing that in here. Um, it didn't really uh, rally on the news, but it didn't really fall on the news. So it's kind of flat there. And the Japanese yen also uh, kind of flat there. And we have the Kiwi that's kind of flat there. So notice the theme here. There are certain currencies that you just have to avoid. And that's why we talk about trade the currency that's moving instead of trading the currency that you think is giving you the best setup. You know, a lot of good setups were in the dollar, but that was not the case in this um, in the in the trading day today. If she had this focus on euro and the pound against the Aussie and the key CAD, those were the only two pairings that really worked today. Now, let's take a look at the broader markets. And you can see that everything was kind of on the upside. We had the S&P up 0.84%. Uh, we had the uh, BT stock index up 0.97%. Bonds are up. Again, usually you see that negative correlation there. We had the crypto up today. Gold was mostly flat, so it did recover some of the losses from early in the day. And look at oil; it continues to run. It's so imp uh, you know that's that that's sort of a leading um, sign of worries is that the oil has been running. I think it's been up like thirty percent in the last uh, you know two three months. So that's uh, really adding on to the inflationary pressure. So. That seems to be the story continue to play out. Now, looking at the crypto markets, we have continued to see some of the bounce in these crypto markets. Overall, we know that the trend is to the downside, but in the, in the short term, just getting a um, sort of a rally in the short term. So if you take a look at our outlook today, and I think this is where it's still sort of uh, indecisive here. We'll see what happens tomorrow. But you see where we were, we were kind of sideways. So we just didn't have a clarity on the outlook. Now. Post that report today, you can see we are trying to break out here, but we're not really back at the highs yet. If this breaks this high, that's when you know that maybe a rally is in place. Um, but right now, we this is just a one day that popped out of this. So we can't really um, make this a plus one or plus two, even though it just really got above this two-day moving average. Um, you know, next 24 hours will be interesting. Where we close tomorrow will probably set the momentum up going into next week. But for markets to break out, we need to get above this uh, th this point here. So yeah, it's really uh, uh, been a, a messy price action. Now let's take a look at the uh, the reports. So, so this is where if you look at the macro, you look at the economics uh, report, everything is supporting for the strong dollar. 
And that should really hurt the uh, the equity markets and again support the bond market. So the bond market did react, you know, as it, as it was supposed to. The equities and the dollar just did not participate in that. So take a look at the PPI. Um, so PPI was month over month was up zero point seven versus zero point four. That's quite a jump there. Look at the retail sales. The Fed wants to drop this retail sales number. Look at that zero point one to zero point six. Unemployment claims is also uh, down as well. So this is, again, overall, you know, a, a bullish report, which uh, which is also uh, uh, bullish for the dollar and, and, and for the bond yields. So interestingly, didn't see much happen today. We'll see what happens tomorrow. What kind of price action we get. But whenever you get this disconnect, that's where you really have to look at it carefully because maybe it's a, a delayed price action, maybe something we see tomorrow. Uh, but, you know, those are the things that you always need to be, uh, you know, sort of careful about. Uh, take a look at the ECB. They raised rates by uh, 25 basis point, and it was a surprise. And that's where we talk about it's not the rate statement, it's the policy. Initially, the price action went to the upside, and then it just fell apart on dovish sort of statement there. So going forward, pay close attention to what the statement says, because that's really where the big move is coming. What's the forward guidance? What's the outlook? That's the that's what matters right now. Do you want to be a professional trader? Maverick Currencies is the oldest U.S.-based Forex and crypto prop trading company that will pay you for trading with our capital. Trade our capital and keep 70 to 80% of the profits. We are looking for traders just like you that are hardworking and motivated. Click the apply link on the top right of this video to see if you have what it takes. That link takes you to a four minute video that explains the trader position available and you read a list of FAQs that answer pretty much all the basic questions you have at this point. After watching the video and reading the FAQs, if you're interested, fill out an application, then you'll watch the full length recruiting video and then schedule an interview with one of our traders. Are you our next trader? So let's take a look at currency analysis. Let's take a look at what's really moving as far as the velocity goes. So you can see that the Canadian dollar unusually strong. I mean, at a plus three. I don't, I don't recall the last time we had this bit of a divergence. I mean, I remember last year we had this kind of divergence. But look at the dollar and the CAD. Usually dollar has been the leading and CAD is just, you know, kind of following. And here we are seeing a bit of a, an opposite picture here. So we'll take a look at CAD and the dollar. And also, let's take a look at the, uh, you know, the Aussie. But most importantly, let's take a look at the European currencies. Remember, we talk about how European currencies were weakening going into this week. And now they have now slipped into a negative territory. So now the question is that do we adjust our outlook? Do we shift to uh, uh, the weaker European currencies? I think that's something we have to discuss. So let's take a look at possible trades ahead. Look at the, uh, the charts for the S&P the bonds and the bond yields and you can see how are the dollar and the bond yields you can see to all day today after the initial price action the equities rally the dollar you can see had a huge back and forth i mean look at that messiness of that chart there but at the same time it's it's, it's still towards the high of that day it didn't really break out but it's really falling so you got to be careful um, even though the dollar did not participate in that move, doesn't mean the dollar is going to fall apart. Dollar still kind of holding in there. And look at that. This is the <clears throat> sort of a third puzzle here is the bond yields. Bond, bond yields initially went down, but then look at that. It closed at the highs of the day. So we'll have to see what happens tomorrow. I'm still very unclear on where things are heading. Now let's let's get into the charts over here. Let's get into European currency. So I'm actually going to bring... Um, the trend chart, because that's where we want to see are we following the right direction. Look at the euro. So euro, euro pound, Swiss franc, they all have done exceptionally well. Now they seems to be kind of falling off that uh, off that little uh, strength there. I mean, take a look at how much we have rallied since last year. That's a rally. Since since the bottom of last year, the euro has at, at this point, euro had rallied about ten percent. But altogether, it was about twelve percent rally. Now that's a massive rally, but it seems like now we are below the moving average. So this is where we have to uh, adjust our outlook and maybe look at it more on the bearish side of the European currencies. Same story is playing out with the British pound as well. 
So British pound from last year at the bottom to the top, I mean, massive 20% rally. So this is really where the, the the money has been flowing. Take a look at Swiss franc. You know, they're, they're, they're extremely strong. I mean, 18, 20%. Now the question is, uh, is there trouble brewing there? And is that going to, you know, uh, dictate into the policy statements? And I think that's where it's, that's why I think Swiss franc is also at a risk here as well, because next week Swiss bank meets. And if the outlook is really uh, deteriorating, then they might not want to raise rates um, as as uh, as quickly as we are seeing in the U.S., where the data is still pretty strong. So euro, pound, and Swiss franc, they all are now below those 20 and the 50 to moving average. Now, let's break it down into the time frame on what time frame we can look at the charts for a potential setup here. Now, looking at a four-hour chart after a big drop here, what we need to see is a sort of a bear rally or sort of a, a base. We need to uh, let that market digest some of that news before we get into it. But at this point, I do not want to play this on the long side. I'd rather uh, look for the rallies to kind of short it to. Same thing goes with the British pound as well. You know, it's weakening. I uh, If you look at the, the overall scheme here, we are getting some of the rallies here, but they're getting sold off. So the gravity has shifted towards the downside. Now, it's getting pulled towards the downside. That's what we want to take a look at. So Euro pound and then Swiss franc is the is the last one. It's slowly moving. It's not aggressive, but remember next week we have the uh, we we have the uh, S and B uh, press conference as well. So what do we want to pair it with? So the dollar. Let's let's go to the dollar here. So I think this is what I want to point out that if you look at a longer term chart, and this is the question we always ask: Is anything change? I mean, I know we didn't see a participation in the dollar overall, but anything has changed. Well, the answer is no. Does it look like a consolidation? Well, it does. So what is it telling you? It's telling you that it's not ready to go long yet, but it's not ready to be shorted yet either. You know, that's that's why we don't want to be just jumping on the other side and look at the adult to the downside. This is still a consolidation. So uh, let's not touch that. I, I, I have a rule that, you know, if we have a plus two or a plus three, in sort of a price action, then we I only want to trade it in one way. But when things are not as strong or weak, then that's where we can look at it both ways. So dollar looks pretty strong. I don't want to buy it, but I don't want to sell it either. Now, the is it the yen that I want to buy or sell? Remember, the equity markets looks pretty strong. <clears throat> this price action looks pretty weak here. So overall, I do not like to buy the yen here either. I mean, if you look at any little pops, these pops are being sold off. So can we see some growth, uh, some of the opportunities in growth currencies? Now, let's take a look at CAD. I mean, now this is where you know the money's going. Remember, we had this consolidation that we were kind of working against the entire month of August. We have clearly broken out. We are now approaching the next level of resistance. And beyond that point, you can see that this is where the massive fall that took place last year. Um, so this is the... Uh, this is a support area. So it still has a little bit of area for uh, for this to run higher. <clears throat> I like the fact that it is running uh, independently from the dollar. So I, I do like CAD to the upside. So look at the daily chart. Look at the four-hour chart. Look at the hourly chart. Everything is pointing out to the upside. So we're going to see some pullbacks. But I think those pullbacks probably a buying opportunity. It looks extended a little bit right now. So I would rather wait for some decent setups to come in to 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 reload on this one, which again won't be until the tomorrow session. Look at the Aussie. Now Aussie, Kiwi has been uh, pretty weak, but if you take a look at the Aussie and Kiwi, like Aussie seems to be wanting to break above this resistance here. So if you look at the scoring system here, it's above the 20, right at the, right at the 50. So it's, it's, it's at about a plus one. So it's not looking as weak as it was just a few weeks ago. But at the same time, question is that, is that a, a clear long here? So this is the resistance where we are at. Last time we got to the resistance, we pull back. If it stays above this area, I think the uh, the Aussie can continue to strengthen. On the other hand, Kiwi is not showing the same love. So let's just stick with where the strength is. So it's pretty clear where we are looking. Let's take a look at Euro Aussie. So Euro Aussie, beautiful uh, sort of a breakdown. Let's start from the daily. We broke below. So very similar pattern across the board. We had just 
testing the prior uh, resistance, which is now the support. We need to see some bear rallies. I mean, on a four hour, on an hourly chart, we are getting a bit of a consolidation. Um, that's a good sign because we want to be looking for some sort of consolidation before we break lower. But I do like this one. You just have to be careful that if you're opening a position, you know, tonight or tomorrow, and if you don't plan to hold it over the weekend, then you have to really use the appropriate time frame. But I really like this window next week. Now, same thing goes with the pound Aussie as well. It looks pretty weak, four-hour chart. They're all kind of following the same sort of story here. So the, the idea is still the same. Look for bear rallies or look for some sort of a basing setup to enter that trade. Um, if the dollar continue, if the dollar gets better, then I think we can also take a look at opportunities with the pound dollar. I mean, you can see that this is a massive level of resistance, which is a support and that it broke today. So it did break. And I like that, that the fact that it's, it's gone from almost 131 to a 125. I would rather look for this to break below those levels. And same thing goes with the euro dollar. I mean, we just broke that key support area that we were back in June. We had a massive rally, made new highs, and now we made new lows. So that's where the money is kind of flowing in and out of. I think that's what we need to focus on. So depending on what's moving, we can pair that together. But be clear that, that you know, make sure you're, you're trading the currency that are moving. Uh, make sure you're not trading against the trend. You know, sticking with the trend, trend is your friend. So overnight tomorrow, looking for follow through moves in the pound and the euro. Um, you know, make sure that you're following momentum. If you're opening your trades, understand the timeline for your trades and pick your time frame accordingly. And uh, we'll gear up for next week. Again, a very busy week next week as well. Thanks everyone for joining. We'll see you in the next update. Cheers.